My name is James Wickett. I work, work over at Signal Sciences uh, on the engineering team, uh, working on a, a great uh, defense uh, next-gen web app firewall over there. And this is uh, Ernest Muller uh, over at Alien Vault. Um, you want to give a one second on Alien Vault? Uh, sure. We're a security software company uh, with a giant booth over there in the expo hall, so you can find out more. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try to swap back and forth, so this is going to be really interesting how this uh, plays out here. But uh, we, we blog together on the Agile Admin. Uh, we've been friends for uh, a really long time, doing a lot of stuff that they mentioned earlier um, about uh, uh, DevOps and, and uh, uh, security and really uh, trying to do a lot of stuff in the uh, Austin world. Well, we're, we're kind of hoping that this presentation is going to be that presentation that you see that might change your life. It may not be, uh, but that's all right. You know, I was thinking today we should call it, today is what day is it? It's Leap Day, right? Yeah, yeah Leap Day. We should call it Lean Day. <laughs> yep, there's more of those. Okay, good. Uh, so there's, in this, in this uh, really great book called uh, Thinking Security, that came out at the end of last year, uh, the, the author notes on this very poignantly in the preface, and he says, Okay, we're, we're trying to uh, protect the wrong things, and worse, we're actually hurting productivity while we're doing so. And, uh, and, and as a security professional, you may feel like, let's see, you may feel like you're this guy, right? It's like, or you're, you're the, the, the two cops, right? And you're like, this is just like, we're not actually making an effect uh, in the world that we live in. So uh, over the course of the day, you've, you've heard a lot of terms uh, as part of many of these presentations. And so we want to go back and break, break it open for you, especially Lean. But to talk about Lean, you have to at least briefly mention Agile. Uh, it, I assume most people are kind of familiar with Agile. This is the, this is the core Agile manifesto. Um, and why is it that people use Agile? Because because it gives them a whole bunch of benefits, right? And, and uh, uh, you see some of the stats there, but uh, people are always looking for ways to, to get their products out better, faster, higher quality. Yeah, and uh, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be good to talk about Agile and then and without uh, going into DevOps, um, the ink came off after just a couple of days. It was really worth it. Um, and the problem that we found out when we were doing DevOps, and this DevOps is just starting, um, like the, the devs care about different things that, that ops care about. And we see the same thing uh, happening to security, which we'll, we'll get to uh, later. Um, but it, it, was, it was almost to the effect like uh, we needed to move all that stuff that we were doing in Agile over to operations. And uh, in the Cloud System Administration book uh, by Tom Lomincelli that just came out, uh, I guess that was last year, uh, he mentions, you know, uh, DevOps is like, the end, the end result of Agile to operations. Like, you, you have to do this. It has to make that extension. And we talked about why DevOps. I love that now we're, we're saying, like, okay, what's the penetration of DevOps into organizations or how, like, how are we advancing in this? And, and there's all these studies coming out. Three or four years ago, it was like, is DevOps a fad? Is DevOps really a thing? Is it just stupid? Like, and, and the conversation has completely changed where now the, the acceptance is there and now we're talking about the adoption and how people are getting gains out of it. As we saw earlier in, in uh, Nicole and Jez's uh, presentation, these aren't just like, we're 10% better now. We think we might want to do this. This is like orders of magnitude better. And so that's why everybody in the organization is saying like, yes, we must actually do this. Uh, and that, that brings us uh, to Lean, which is a highly uh, influential uh, piece of this whole, whole puzzle, we think. All right. Uh, so Lean, uh, who, here is, who here has heard of Lean or is familiar with it from either a, a manufacturing or software development? Or OK, a good number of folks. Great. Um, so, so Lean, it started with you know, W. Edwards Deming and the Toyota production system and revolutionizing manufacturing, right? And it was then adapted to software development, uh, uh, initially uh, in a seminal work by uh, the Poppendieks, who, who wrote about Lean software development and its, its core principles. Um, the... And they, they blew out a bunch of different kind of uh, things you can do, right? Test-driven development, uh, uh, you know, visualization of metrics, pull-based uh, pull uh, uh, workflows. I'm not going to go over those here, but we're going to kind of talk about some of them in a security context later on in the presentation. Now, there's a second kind of thread of lean, and that's lean product development. Uh, who's read or knows about Eric Ries' lean startup? 
book, fewer, but uh, uh, so essentially he, he takes the lean concept and applies it to developing a product and uses the core build, measure, learn uh, loop to, to figure out how do, you, how do you make what it is you really need to be making as opposed to the thing you thought you needed to make on day one, which may or may not be representative. Um, and so these fit together into, into one picture. This is uh, from Matthias Marshall, uh, who, who did a great job of, uh, uh, of showing how, if you've got your lean product management, your agile development, your operations, DevOps brings some of that together, and then lean is kind of a foundation that underpins kind of how you, how you do that, right? You can, when DevOps first came out, there wasn't as much discussion about lean, but then folks like John Willis, uh, uh, started seeing how you could really go off, off path with, uh, with a DevOps implementation if you weren't keeping those lean principles in mind. So there's been more and more discussion of lean as a underpinning part of, uh, uh, of DevOps. So who wants to know what the challenges are that these things pose to information security? No. All right, so, <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, we're gonna be talking about innovation here, and so whenever you have new concepts like, uh, like Agile, DevOps, Lean, whenever you have new technologies, mobile and social, right? If always your first reaction is, how is this a threat to security? You're adopting a losing mindset, right? Instead, maybe you should ask yourself, how can I use these things to make security better? Right? How, how can I actually get in on some of the win instead of how do I you know, play blocker against those trying to use these to win? Because lean security is for winners. I think we're gonna trademark that phrase. I think that's, that's uh, good. You know, we've, we try to break up um, into, into six different uh, items or six, six different problems that we see in security right now and how lean can influence that. And we're going to try to rotate uh, through some of those real quick for you. Okay, so number one, I think security often gets uh, bucketed in the, the realms of compliance and audit and all that stuff. And I think it's not completely unfair. Um, you know, it, a lot of times it feels like we've traded in engineering for actuarial duties and, and we're, we're not uh, making the impact that we really wish we could. In uh, his book, uh, Michael Zalewski, uh, in uh, Tangled Web, it's a browser security book, but the first chapter uh, has an overview of the history of uh, information security and, and computing. And in it, he has this uh, really uh, poignant quote. It says, risk assessment introduces a dangerous fallacy that structured inadequacy is almost as good as, structured, as, good as adequacy and that underfunded security efforts plus risk management is just about as good as properly funded security work. Um, and, and the point of that is like, what we're doing is we're wrapping uh, policies and, um, and, and, and accept the risk statements and things like that um, around not actually doing the things that, that we need to do. And, and Lean has some things to, to say about, oh, see, so do you have any other, okay. Uh, Sorry, presenter notes weren't showing up. Yeah, we were having a presenter note uh, dual, dueling uh, uh, thing here. Okay, great. So the question, the, one, of the, one of the key tenets in Lean is like, do you know where, um, uh, what value you're providing, uh, where it's coming from. This is a, a lean, um, this is a lean, uh, in lean you map out the value stream of your organization. And so the idea is all the way from idea to, to customer. Um, although, or like, you know, a lot of people like to say concept to cash. Um, and looking at this, what kind of value to provide? And is, if your value is only providing just like loose audit or compliance type things, and not, not that compliance itself doesn't have value, but how do you provide it earlier in the value stream um, and actually make your, your value statements earlier and part of other parts of the, uh, parts of the process? Uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, I can move that one. Yeah. Uh, Johan Baker, in his, uh, uh, he, had a, he has a white paper out on lean security. Uh, it's a couple years back. And, and in it, he talks about different, different ways where we recognize value. And we need to look at that, like, in, in Agile and DevOps and Lean, um, they teach us a lot of things about adding value and, and kind of internalizing that. And he puts a lot of this, I, I love this, uh, this, these statements because they're, how, did this apply, how does this apply in a security mindset, not just in a, um, uh, not just in a, in a Lean concept, but how do we kind of make this uh, more real to you? And really, the, the key takeaway is, you know, we could philosoph uh, we could come up with a lot of 
uh, ideas on what it looks like in your organization. But if you take a step back and say, what, what, how do I add value here? Uh, that, is, that is crucial. All right, so, uh, so kind of concept number one in, in Lean is the value chain and thinking about what it is you do that actually adds value, right? And thing number two is is the waste that you're generating uh, instead or while you do that. So um, th there's a good, uh, good Fortune Magazine article here recently that uh, talks about how the, the average time to deliver IT projects has, uh, has risen significantly over the years. And when they looked into why, uh, the, the answer was kind of security, right? So uh, especially poorly coordinated uh, security work uh, has actually caused those time, timelines to go out significantly. So in, in Lean, this is, called, this is called waste, right? So any, any activity that is not actually contributing to the value chain, right? Uh, and so it, in Lean, these are all like Japanese terms. Uh, so there's, there's the three wastes. Uh, the one that gets talked about uh, most is Muda. Um, and It has seven forms. There won't be a test, uh, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> these, the, these have some security-centric examples, so there, there's kind of the, the seven way, uh, forms of MUDA. One of the things that's important to understand, there's, there's type one MUDA and type two MUDA. And type one is stuff that it's a necessary evil, you have to do it, but it doesn't really add value to your product. Which, to be honest, is compliance activity and all that stuff, right? I mean, it, it, you, you have to do it. It doesn't add value per se, and type two waste is just pure waste. Um, and this is why we encourage people to figure out how they can add different kinds of value because you don't really want your job to be summed up as type one waste, right? That's not, it's not the sort of thing that uh, continues conversations at the uh, uh, Thanksgiving family dinner table when they ask you what you do. Uh, so there's some more, so looking at these examples, right, you, I'm sure all of you can think of examples in your own mind of ways that, ways that security activity causes these delays, right? Anytime you have to stop and wait, anytime you have to hand things off for somebody else, uh, all of that, anytime you detect a defect way too, way too late and you have to come back and fix it, all of those are waste. And one of the concepts of Lean is, you need to understand the waste that you generate, like analyze your work, figure out where it is you're adding, you know, months to those IT project timelines where you really don't need to be and squeeze that out. Yeah, um, this is one that really uh, resonates with me is security is invisible. Um, often we're really uh, apt to tell everybody, hey, security is everybody else's job. Um, and operations did the same thing, and I think we can learn from uh, web performance and kind of the operation culture circa 2008. Uh, if you look at, you know, we had this problem in, in, uh, in operations, we're like, well, we, what are we going to do? So we did things like, you know, add, added browser extension, extensions, showing uh, perform, doing research that showed performance ties to, to revenue, and uh, things like conferences, taking like front-end devs and, and, and system, sys admins and putting them in the same conference and making them sit together for a few days. Um, you can do all that same thing with security and seeing, um, adding invisibility at these points where we don't necessarily have them uh, right now. Uh, really the lean concept tie in here is we need to see the whole where we're keeping uh, meaningful metrics, visualizations, uh, uh, things like what incidents are happening, what kind of security uh, vulnerabilities we have. Keeping all that in, in front of our, in the, the current path of everybody, their, the workers tool chain I think is how you'd, you'd put that in lean. Uh, and in a lot of ways we need to dissolve some of our least privileged uh, mindset um, and really open up to sharing and as an organization kind of we're playing this game uh, together. So visualize uh, security so that everyone can see it. Uh, another problem that I, I see with security is it's often too late. It's we're often doing this stuff uh, too late in the value in the value stream. Uh, Deming has this quote that says, uh, "Cease dependence on mass inspection to achieve quality. Improve the process and build quality into the product in the first place." Uh, we you don't want to do uh, inspection after you've already shipped out all the cars, right? You want to do that earlier on when you're putting in each piece and each component. Um, and this was look this is stuff like test-driven development um, and really trying to like. Um, 
make an impact on those issues early on. Gene Kim uh, has this three ways of DevOps where uh, really kind of taking the long feedback loop and then making shorter and shorter feedback loops all the way. Uh, I felt this personally um, when we needed a way to, to be mean to your code or to do this kind of testing earlier on. And then I, I worked on this project called the Gauntlet. It's, uh, this is a sample of the code for it, but it's a plain, plain English language that uses like given wins and thens to say, uh, this is the kind of attacks that we want to see and what we expect. Uh, it works like you, you put some code in, uh, it runs through some tests. I have a whole like workshop that uh, we did at South by last year with uh, Matt J. If you're interested in it, uh, check it out. Uh, but really the, the main key is we want to generate security feedback in each step of the value stream. <coughs> All right, uh, problem number five. People think security is always uh, in the way. So are you that guy? Don't, don't be that guy. Uh, so you already know you can't make things secure by yourself and you need, you, you need all the people out there doing the work to actually cooperate in making things secure. Uh, but, and this is a very common Problem, and I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers because I've had this problem, uh, especially early in my career as an ops person. Does it seem like people don't like you and that when you come around with your security things that they're not super receptive to it? Well, so human motivation is, uh, and the study of human motivation is one of the key principles of lean, right? Empower the team is, is uh, one of the seven principles. Um, I'm gonna tell a story here uh, to, to show one way you can get around this. So Netflix, uh, Adrian Cockcroft was speaking at uh, AppSec uh, when it came to Austin. And he, he gave a talk and he was talking about uh, kind of their, their security tooling and he said, well, yes, at Netflix, we, we don't have any process. And obviously that's, that's a confusing statement because you have, a, everybody has a process, it just might be a crappy process, it might be an undocumented process, right? But, but you have a process, but when, when I dug into that more to figure out what he was saying, what he was saying is they, they've implemented uh, a bunch of automation around their, around their cloud tooling. The Simeon Army is, uh, uh, who's heard of the Simeon Army? Okay, great. So uh, a bunch of tooling that kind of automates some of these things just as part of the normal operation system. So if you send a person with a clipboard around everybody telling them, you're running your cloud instances wrong, you should be doing it this different way. Everybody hates that guy. Right, you don't like that guy. But if just the way the tooling works when you try to launch instances without tags or whatever and it doesn't work and it doesn't come up, it says, no, sorry, you need to input a tag. That's just the way the system works. And so what he was saying was that as far as all our developers and everything are concerned, there's not any process because all of that emotional charge around the concept of process and process enforcement they just see it as the way the system works, right? So with self-service automation, you can avoid a lot of that uh, actual negative emotion around uh, an implementation. And then uh, the last path is the, the charge that kind of security is perfectionist. And we fall into this, right? It's like there's always another, always another vulnerability, always another flaw. And this is, uh, this is where it's helpful to think about security as a product, right, as your product and use Eric Ries's, you know, lean startup mentality, right? So it, it's real easy in the security world for people to say, well, if you don't have a $1.2 million budget and the ear of the CEO, oh, you might as well not get started, right? You have to buy six different six-figure tools from all the vendors out here. You have to have that to, to have any security, but that's not true. Right, so what you can do is you can start with minimum viable security, right? It's a security version of the minimum viable product. Uh, get a little bit of security in all the different areas you need it, start getting the metrics back, and then figure out the problem you actually have to solve for your company and where your, your organization needs, needs more, better security. Because whatever it is, somebody who has a canonically good product they wanna sell you, like it doesn't matter, that doesn't necessarily solve your problem. So you iterate through this loop where you learn about your problem and the solutions you're creating. Uh, there's also a good presentation uh, in terms of earlier lean security stuff. Josh Moore did a talk at OWASP 2012 about how you can overlap kind of 80% solutions and get a lot better, lot better uh, result than trying to push one solution to 100%. So. All right, well, um uh, we're we're uh, 
we're pretty much done with our talk, but you know, we know that this is a, uh, maybe this is interesting to you. Like if you want to uh, tweet at us at lean security hashtag, uh, we'll also be around at the, uh, the happy hour thing. Uh, both of us work at uh, companies that see uh, that we're kind of doing in this, this new world uh, state and we're both uh, providing uh, different, different products around that. So be happy to talk to you, hang out with you. Um, see you later. Thanks. Thank you.